things. Right. And to be clear, there a person could levy criticisms on the current Israeli government, but also denounce terrorism. These are acts of terrorism. Um, Jonathan, yeah. put this in, in context for us, uh, that this that this violence comes amid, we have seen, we've been on the show yeah, so many know, times, a surge of anti-Semitism, both at home and abroad. Yeah, I mean, there's a reason why Jewish people around the world are feeling vulnerable in this moment. Anti-Semitic incidents have reached an all-time high, at least since we've been tracking it, for the last 45 years. And so synagogues and offices and people's homes, a kosher supermarket overnight in uh, London was vandalized. So whether it's harassment or vandalism or violence, Jews are feeling a kind of exogenous pressure we haven't seen before. And we know that incidents in the Middle East tend to spark violence here. We saw it in 2021 when Jews were bashed and assaulted in broad daylight in Times Square in West Hollywood, in South Florida, after Hamas previously lobbed missiles at Israel. And so the thing that's so challenging and vexing about this is people are saying, well, could this escalate into a wider war? It is a wider war. This is Al Qaeda, from, from Al Qaeda to ISIS to Hamas. This is what Islamic radicalism, jihadism looks like. Again, it doesn't seek a peaceful resolution of a conflict. This was not some inevitable outcome. This was a pre planned massacre. And how did they send thousands of missiles into Israel? Because they were supplied by Iran. And we will ask those questions. We will wonder about how that failure happened. But I saw David Ignatius, whose journalism I so deeply respect and whose reporting I appreciate. And he said, you know, they will look at was this an intelligence failure? a military failure. Jonathan, this was the West's failure. This was our failure for decades to allow Iran and its proxies to dehumanize Zionists and Jews, to allow people to think on college campuses at Harvard, to allow anti-Zionism to flourish. We saw this in the 30s. Legitimate professors, students who came to believe the poison of the Third Reich, who came to think that in the wake of World War I, the Jews had literally abandoned Germany. And remember what, history, what Hitler said, it's the Jews who caused their own misfortune. Now we have Palestinian Hamas apologists and their acolytes here in the West, their accomplices. Jonathan saying, Israel brought this on, blaming the victim while we're still collecting the bodies is as disgraceful and as dishonorable a thing as I could ever imagine. The last thing I'll say, and I'm so sorry, but I, I don't ever remember feeling like this before, is that the idea, the notion that somehow this peace, this rapprochement with Saudi Arabia, the, they were trying to disrupt it, I think there's some truth to that. But let's be clear, that was a path to peace working out a deal that could have given the Palestinians the, and the Israelis the confidence to make a deal with the Palestinians. Terror reinforces, terror reinforces the conflict because that's what these, these barbarians want. We've got to stand up against them every time. Katie Kay. Jonathan, um, there are reports coming out that this operation may have been two years in the planning. Mm -hmm. uh, Axios has a story this morning that uh, Hamas had even built a mock of an Israeli settlement inside Gaza and was using it to train it. I mean, the level of sophistication of the planning seems to be extraordinary. What does this do to Israelis' sense of security? Because there had, over the last few years, I think, Israelis had developed a sense of believing that between Mossad and the IDF and the security services, they were well protected, that they, um, that they had a force that they could rely on to know Thank what you. was happening in the region. Do you think this disrupts that sense of security in their own forces? Well, a few things. So number one, this didn't start two years ago, Caddy. It started in 1979 with the Islamic Revolution in Iran that made destroying Israel. That was one of Khomeini's precepts. So let's just start there. After the peace treaty with Egypt, the Islamic Revolution was founded in part to reclaim all of historic Palestine. So it started in 79, the planning number. Because again, Hamas is Iran. Let's get that right, number one. Number two, if they were training, it wasn't on a mock Israeli settlement, Caddy. It was an Israeli town where boys and girls played in playgrounds, where mothers and daughters brought their children to school, where people worked and lived. It was a town, not a settlement. Because to Hamas, all of Israel is a settlement, okay? And then thirdly, will this hurt Israeli sense of, um, if you will, security? Israel is a country like any other. 
You can only build walls that are so high. None of them can be impregnable. So yes, I'm sure that Israelis will be concerned about how do we def defend ourselves, but I will tell you this, the resolve and strength of Israel and the Jewish people, Hamas, ha you know, excuse me, Gaza is not now under siege. Israel has been under siege for 75 years. Some would say the Jewish people for 2,000 years. Our resolve is unbreakable, and we will face this down. The Israelis will face this down with the ferocity this situation merits.